So this is my first transmission from the floating platform that I constructed in our backyard in Kailua, Kona, Hawaii, up Coloco Drive. Um, we live in the Ohana next to um, the big house. Um, so Claire, my friend from high school, rents out the Ohana. And my partner Sasha Stomberg and I have been here for the past eight months. Um, we're leaving this month to Charleston, South Carolina. Um, where Sasha's gotten a job at the Brain Simulation Lab at the Medical University there. So as everything kind of wraps up, um, I'm kind of interested in exploring what there is to explore with this limited time left. Um, you know, I had big dreams for this platform. Um, it really is the first space that I've designed and constructed for myself um, ever. Um, so it's been an extremely um, challenging but also really rewarding experience um, and yeah I'm it's it's a shame that we're leaving so soon but maybe it's the deadline that will get me to um, you know go beyond my preliminary tests with green screen and portable projector back here and um, maybe uh, shoot some material that um, will be able to be featured in a more robust project um, but something that's interesting about this format of documentation which is similar in tone to my journal entries and some updates that I've put on my website, uh, the Funhouse uh, Inc. website, is that I've never really done this kind of um, vlogging type uh, free association before. And I think part of that is uh, I'm, I have a tendency to go for precise um, output. And I think the free association for me is less focused. Um, it's less interesting to an audience. Um, very few people are interested in watching something long form. That's maybe not that intentional, but I think something I've learned from coming to Hawaii is that, um, and I think part of why I came here was an interest in prioritizing process um, and practice over product uh, or result. Um, not, um, yeah, and um, I think I owe a lot of that to some of the vibe that I was discovering in New York before I moved away and the people at Soft Surplus and Prime Produce. Um, you know, Austin and Lucy and Dan and Melanie, and um, they all, they were the first kind of people that I met that felt like an older version of myself, somewhere where I wanted to see myself being. And I didn't really know um, before I met them that people like that existed kind of, uh, yeah, versions of me, but 10 years in the future where they balance kind of, um, you know, um, political consciousness with kind of um, punk ethos, do it yourself um, mentalities, um, but still rigorous intellectuals, all kind of shrouded with, um, you know, a loving energy um, that doesn't kind of veer off into new age abstractness, but is kind of really grounded in community and caring for each other and thinking of really practical solutions to actually impact social change and sustain, um, you know, um, a feeling of friendship and um, codependency in a very healthy way, um, in a way that I feel like is very difficult to find a lot of the time. And it's funny that that sense of community and practice um, was something that I found right before I came to Hawaii, where I've been probably more isolated um, than I've ever been. Um, in Seattle or New York or anywhere um, and being here has allowed me to slow down a little bit um, especially in regards to thinking about my career trajectory um, and how linked um, my income is like where am, whether where are my financial sources um, are divorced from the disciplines that I'm interested in cultivating so it's like before I felt, you know, I had to maybe go to grad school or get this grant or fellowship and get in with this really hip crowd of architecture intelligentsia. And I think what I'm discovering that, and it's actually really refreshing, um, is that the stuff that I'm really interested in um, doesn't really align with, um, you know, career-minded uh, seekers or that uh, the ideology of linking everything in your life into one thing. Um, whether it's that lifestyle of a professor or a licensed architect, um, and that um, the sources of income don't necessarily have to match up to what you're doing. So you don't need a full-time year-round job 
that's uh, exactly matched to your mission. Um, but I also don't want to do the thing where it's a day job and then the passions are just kind of swept away to the evenings and weekends. Um, I've learned a lot from being here um, from the rainforest itself, I think. Um, it's something I've always wanted since um, even freshman year of college when I was crying because of how much work I had and punching the wall and kind of confused at how I got there and I felt like I didn't belong there and I just really wanted to have time and um, space to work on my own projects and not have to worry about um, money or you know um, commitments um, that were external to what I found valuable and I think I finally discovered that here in the pace that I've been able to uh, achieve for myself um, in the kind of financial model that I'm working on right now where I work remotely part-time with Joel Sanders um, and continuing to do kind of development work for our inclusive design research. I think um, what's interesting about having this space to reflect in terms of um, being in the rainforest and looking into a camera and speaking into a lav mic and an audio interface alone is that it's kind of, um, I don't know, I feel like before I still have the anxiety of the battery time, the run time, the storage capacity of the SD card. Um, and there's something about it being captured in a resolution that is satisfying to me that's very new. Um, this really, and also I think the I've oftentimes shied away from representing myself um, visually and audio and in audio, you know, I always mask uh, my image, um, you know, with Photoshop or video compositing techniques or my voice, um, you know, through layers of compression and reverb, um, delay, um, pitch shifting, uh, what have you. And oftentimes in my music these days, I'm um, oftentimes speak through other vocalists, featured vocalists. Um, so I think the rawness of this is new for me. Um, and I wish it was actually a practice that um, I'd started earlier, but I think the cliche is kind of true that architects really do need a deadline um, to get stuff done. And uh, I have a little bit of a worry that this isn't totally in focus, um, but it's kind of hard going back and forth and checking focus. I might try an autofocus lens uh, for the next session. Um, and I think throughout uh, the few videos I'll get to capture before we move away. I'd like to reflect on um, the personal changes I've gone through here in my own psychology, um, things that I've worked out with um, the psychologist that I see here, Sophia Wang. Um, there's a lot to be said about how Sasha and I's relationship has changed. And I think um, that runs parallel to my own personal changes. Living with someone for the first time um, has been big. Um, it's taught me a lot about reality and the maintenance of a reality um, and the blurring of, um, you know, your own uh, force field of personality um, with someone else's and keeping track of where you're your own person and where you're your unit. Um, I'd like to talk about the community that I found here at the Donkey Mill Art Center since starting a ceramics class there um, and finding people like Miran and Aaron Skelton and Miho and Maki and uh, Hiroki and Bobby and um, the other Miho and just this really rich community in Holualoa, Hawaii that's um, that likes off surplus or prime produce is a community that I could see myself being a part of, which is, has been new for me. Um, I never really felt at home in New York and in Seattle, I feel like I was still in such early stages of like developing my own personality. Um, I'd like to talk about um, my development as a, an artist, even I don't like that word artist, but um, in my development as a musician and a producer working electronically, um, just the way that I can creatively map out projects um, through writing or diagrams or in the case of this platform dimensions and, um, you know, mechanical tasks, construction tasks, you know, like for the steel cable, how much 
um, poundage can it support um, how can I swedge um, this thimble um, without um, a proper swedging tool um, cold welding um, you know like just things like um, buying the right kind of primer or sealant um, to waterproof the hardwood merbau that's cladding this platform um, so thinking differently and thinking more practically has been something that's been great here